Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about uh, spending ungodly sums on Magic the Gathering. And yeah, so some people spend, and I had a friend, his name was Steven. He spent, you know, he bought case after case after case of Battle for Zendikar. And it just never ended. I think some of the videos on, on this channel, but like we opened a lot more than just what was on videos on the channel. And especially given the fact that um, he was kept opening until... The plan was to keep opening until he had four expedition scalding tarns. So he was looking for four of an ex a specific expedition, which at the time was one of the more expensive expeditions. I think Polluted and that card were one and two. I um, mean, it's still probably one and two. So that type of uh, addiction, that type of continued buying habit is something that I have in the past I've seen. Um, from a lot of my friends. I have another friend uh, out in Katy and his collection. He has a whole room where he just puts his bulk and he has play sets of every... It's not enough for him to get a play set of Tamagoyce on Future Sight. It, he needs a play set of Foil Tamagoyce from Future Sight. Then he needs a play set of Foil Tamagoyce from Modern Masters 1. And then when Modern Masters 2015 came out, he got a play set of Foil Tamagoyce there. So people spend ungodly sums of money on this game and you know from a collecting aspect and that's probably what Wizards of the Coast want you to do they want you to eventually once you get a really good paying job once you have um, you know stability they want you to spend your extra income not on movies not on video games not on boats or golfing or any of those hobbies they want you to spend that ungodly sum of income on this card game and some people do there does come to a point when some a collection grows too large and the significant other tells you to downsize and that's what's happening with Kobe uh, right now and uh, he is being told he needs to downsize his collection and you know get rid of the bulk or at least so it's a fire sale and it's a very good sale and it's something that you can flip it to make money from but at the same time it's not, it's something that was predictable. Um, it is predictable that eventually some at one point you're going to sell all of it or, or sell the majority of it to because you can't just keep funneling money into this hobby over and over again because the hobby only gets more expensive. Um, now, like I've made a video about this, we have not just one summer set, we have not just two summer sets, we have Eternal Masters which we're all going to get beaten on the head with because the price is not going to be MSRP, I believe. You know, the stores are going to spike up the price a little bit, at least initially. And then we have Aldric Moon, we have Commander 2016, and we have Conspiracy 2. So it's not like we have a... And then rotation happens. There's so many things that are making this game much more expensive than it really should be. Uh, Mythic being one thing, Expeditions being another. And we'll go, we're going to have a super expedition one day. Like, I, I don't know what they're going to call it, but I guarantee you we will have a card that is rarer than an expedition. Um, and that card will actually be valuable and it will actually be a good card. It might be a reprint of some type, but it might be like a super Tamagoy. And that's how our game is going, where to continue to play and to continue to enjoy at the highest level. No one, I, I get the point where people say you can make budget decks, you can make row decks. I get it, but it's not fun to lose. And at FNM, even at the most casual FNM I go to, people have tier one decks. They have net deck, the, you know, cause that's, you don't have time to rogue. First of all, to make a rogue deck, you have to either net deck it, which would defeat the whole purpose of it, in my opinion, or you would have put a lot of time figuring out what that deck the complexities and interactions of that deck and play testing it and when you first play test it you're going to lose a lot a lot uh, and rogue decks in my opinion are easier to hate out because they once you understand what they're trying to do uh, you can beat them because you have a tier one deck that probability wise will have more wins so yeah i mean just it is a hobby that is more and more expensive as we go into eternal masters as we go into who knows what's next? Like, um, I don't know what's going to be happening next, but that pool of ex uh, players like who are semi vendors, uh, it's disappearing, at least in Houston, because uh, other life responsible 
there's certain age group. So when someone who is my age uh, in, middle, in elementary school plays the game and now has income to buy the game much more, that, you know, I'm 28 and once I get to like 30, I'm not probably gonna have this collection. I might make, continue to make videos because I enjoy doing it, but I'm not gonna have a massive collection anymore because I just know it because what significant other is gonna be like, hey, yeah, buy more of that stuff, right? Anyway, bye guys.